Hey, what's going on guys? So while my compressor is still out of order, we can't actually get to the painting process of the G40 yet. Here we are gonna do a little bit of work on this. There's some scene lines that need to be removed and a little bit of work here I wanna do, especially on the torso. So on the note of the painting though, real quick, it looks like in the poll that we had, the G3 color scheme was the winner for the color scheme for this. So that's what color scheme will ultimately be painting it in. But let's just do a little bit of work here on this first. So we'll just break it down into a few parts here first. The first part that I wanna work on here is the chest actually. And specifically what I want to try to do is make this part of the chest a little less uh, curved, more just straightened. So like these lines here on the front of the profile here, just want to straighten that out and then this one. So I'm just going to file that to just make it just a flat surface across there and there. And then I think the top of the chest here too, these two surfaces, just going to file those to just make this more flat so it doesn't have any curve to it. Flat here and then flat here as well. Just gonna take a flat file here and just kind of slowly, cause it's not really gonna take much actually. And this is actually a couple different parts, but I'm just gonna leave this as it is put together for the time being, just so that you can get a good feel for that. All right, then after just a little bit of work on that, it's gonna be a very, very small negligible difference there, but just a very slight difference in the profile of that, just having a little bit of a flatter, sharper angle there for these parts of the chest rather than just that little tiny bit of curve there. So it's a very small difference and just a little a couple different surfaces there, but that is gonna be all for that. Now for the next bit, I'm gonna need to pull out a scriber here. This guy for turning your seam lines into panel lines. So here on the side of the waist, we got the two sections of the red part there in the stomach section that have seam lines between them. And so for these parts, I'm just gonna glue those and get rid of that seam line. So we'll glue and sand that here in a moment. But for here on the torso, we've got just a little bit of seam line here. So just for that bit, just underneath the armpit of the gun, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that into a panel line. So we need to take this apart once again. And a lot of people ask me questions about this or I just see people kind of stressing about it in general about having to take apart kits once you've already put it together. Over the course of like building and then like doing any sort of even just like slight modification like we're doing with this very slight modification uh, and painting process, you have to take build and take apart different sections multiple times and it's really not that big of a deal. I, you just shouldn't stress about it too much and you shouldn't worry about breaking stuff because I do it all the time and hardly ever break anything and every once in a while you do break something and you can easy, usually pretty much easily fix anything without too much issue anyway. So we're gonna take our back half part here and then just this just goes across the edge of that to just make this into a nice little pen line. I have to give that a couple runs in one direction, turn it around and give it a couple runs in the opposite direction here as well. And voila, there we go. Now our seam line is now a panel line, so we don't have to worry about that. As for the red ones, as I said, we're just gonna put some glue on that. So we're just using, as usual, just some Tamiya extra thin cement here. As for the lower section, you may be thinking, well, wait a minute, it's gotta hold all this stuff in there, so aren't you worried about having to paint that? Actually, not really, because of course all this stuff is gonna be hidden inside the Gundam anyway, so I'm not really too worried about, I'm not gonna be painting this part. Of course, if you have the Gundam posed in a certain way, then this inner section can be exposed a little bit, but I don't think that's gonna happen. If that's the case, I'm just, I'll just go ahead and just hand brush this, that's easy enough. Don't need to worry about masking that or anything. Now before we move on to fixing the seam lines on the arms, let's switch back to our modification mode here and go down here to legs. Now there's not really too much to do here with the legs, at least for me. There are sort of seam lines here on the thigh and then here on the lower leg, but I'm actually just gonna leave those just because the design of both of them looks like it's intentional, like it's supposed to be there as like a natural panel line just between the armor. Now we could accentuate that just with our tool here and make that panel line just a little bit wider like we did with the torso. I may do that down here on the lower part of the leg. I'm still thinking about that. But for the time being, I wanna talk about here these front ankle armor parts. Now the front ankle armor parts as it is, is uh, the, the top part is okay, but I'm just not really so much of a fan of this lower part here. It just seems a little bit unnecessary. Like you already have the ankle armor here kind of protecting the ankle, I guess. And then what's this little bit flat one here kind of protecting? It's kind of like protecting this toe joint, I guess, maybe sort of. I don't really quite understand that. And we still have a gap up here. So it's not actually really even protecting the ankle uh, joint really all that well anyway. So what I was thinking would be cool is to flip it upside down if we could put it up like this way and then that uh, flap is actually kind of sticking up a little bit. 
which just seems to make more sense. It also kind of looks kind of cool in my opinion. It looks like it's like a pair of shoes or something like that, and it's like the tongue of the shoes kind of sticking up. But it kind of looks interesting, and it still fits, I think, really well with the design just up like that. The problem is that it doesn't look quite fit on there. So if you see here, it's basically just a ball and socket joint where that just fits onto there like so. And so you have this circular part with just the bottom bit cut out. So basically what we're going to do is just cut out that same sort of little bit there from the top half of this. Just cut that out just a little bit so that that can be put onto there. And ultimately what I'm going to do is glue it on there. So even if it, you know, after this is cut out, I think it may not want to stay on there very well. It might be kind of loose and prone to falling off. So ultimately once the kit is all painted, I'm just going to glue it in place and then we won't worry about that anyway. And so how I'm going to go about doing this is actually just using a drill here. I think I'm just going to go 1.5, one millimeter. Let's just do one millimeter first. Always better to just start off small. Make sure you know what you're doing. And you can just always make the hole bigger. It's easier than going the opposite way, of course. You could also, I suppose, just cut that part out with a knife. But just to make sure that I'm getting a nice, good cutout here, I'm just going to drill this first. And then what I think I'll do is just increase the drill size after I've got this initial hole in here to a larger size that will punch out the entire space that we need. So that is the one millimeter hole drilled in there. And I guess a good way to do this would be taking our drill bit and seeing what size fits in the opposite side. So that's two millimeter, it's still kind of loose. Let's try 2.5 millimeter. And that looks like that is probably about right. But I'm gonna try two millimeter first to see if that fits on the side there. I think that is actually gonna be right. So let me just also clean up the sides a little bit here just with the knife. And no, that's actually not quite big enough. So let's go up one more to 2.5 millimeter. This one should definitely be right. There we go. And it doesn't matter if it's not too super clean at the moment, that's okay. Uh, just so we're gonna try this just to make sure that it fits onto here. Phew. All right, so after a little bit more work, just taking a little bit of that slowly, little bit by little bit, now that is gonna fit on here just right, like that. And we probably, once that's painted, it'll probably stay on pretty well. It won't need glue, I suppose, but I will still glue it anyway, just to be safe. So once that's on the foot, it's gonna look like this instead like that for comparison. So what do you guys think? I'm sure a lot of you guys will probably still just prefer the original and you won't like this particular choice that I've made with that, but some of you may. I don't know. It looks cool to me. I like that. And I, like I said, I just wanted to change the design just a little tiny bit on that and it works for me. I think that's just a very simple little thing that just changed it just enough to make it look pretty cool. So all right, let's do that to the other foot and I'll move on to the arms. So just real quick, there's how it looks with the both legs. Now, like I said, I don't think that everyone is gonna be on board with that one, but I think it looks all right. So like I said, the next thing we're gonna look at here then basically is just the arms. And there's just a couple seam lines here on the forearm that we need to take care of. And that would be here and here on both of these parts on the back side, just on the main part there. So the problem is going to be twofold in that the first one is that this elbow joint, if you want to paint this in a different color, it's just kind of molded together with these parts here. So you'd have to either cut that apart, separate it, or you're going to have to do some masking. And so I'm just going to probably end up having to do some masking on that part. And the second problem is that there's a joint between these two parts. Of course, there's been these are meant to like do a little bit of shimmy rotation there. And honestly, I don't really care too much for that. No matter how I end up posing this, and I haven't actually decided quite if I'm gonna have it just like in a standard just a standing pose or in some sort of action pose. It feels like a little bit of a waste to not have this kit in some sort of action pose. So I'll have to figure out which one I ultimately wanna go with. But for the time being anyway, uh, I don't think I'm gonna really care too much about having the arm slightly bent one way or the other. So I'm probably just gonna glue this all just all together like that so that this is not actually gonna end up moving at all. Uh, so let's take these apart and do one seam at a time, I think will be best. So once again, just a little extra fine cement here between these parts for seam line number one, and then seam line number two here as well. Now I'm actually gonna try to avoid getting too much glue in here that will stop the articulation between the top and bottom half, even though I just said that I don't care to have that articulated. Uh, if it is still articulated after gluing, then that'll be cool, I guess. If not, then I'm not really too worried about it. So we'll glue this and we'll see how it goes if glue gets in there, but it shouldn't. I'm putting it on carefully 
So I'm gonna go ahead and glue the other arm now here as well. And that's pretty much it for any sort of modifications and things. There is also a seam line, of course, here on the rifle that we'll need to get rid of, but that's pretty straightforward. So uh, just finishing up the seam line removal, sanding that, doing a little bit more cleanup work because some parts that I haven't sanded yet in just preparation for painting, like for example, the shield here you can see is not sanded at all yet. So we'll have to just finish up some sanding on some of these parts getting everything prepped for painting and I think that's gonna be it until just the actual painting so in the next video we'll go in and start on the actual painting process so hopefully my new compressor will be here soon so until that comes in and I'm able to start airbrushing again you guys won't see this again until that time so we'll go over the painting process in the next part of this work in progress series but as always guys thank you to USA Gundam store for their support check the link to their site there down in the video description of course and thank you all for watching I'll see you guys next time bye bye